and I'd just like to use my time briefly today to, to make the argument that, in fact, um, Japan is, uh, is as engaged as ever uh, on the international stage, as engaged as ever with uh, the United States and, and with its neighbors. And so I guess I would add, um, Ambassador Fujisaki gave us seven Ps, and I guess I would add an eighth, and that's proactive. Uh, Japan really is remaining very proactive in the international community, and uh, contrary to some of these, these the conventional wisdom that's out there, has not in fact ceded uh, its position on the, on the international stage. And I would just sort of go through some of the areas in which really what we call our global partnership with Japan is, uh, is succeeding and, and, and making headway in a number, any number of areas that the United States is, is very focused on. Uh, Afghanistan, for example, uh, Japan is the second largest donor there, uh, five billion dollars over five years, and is poised in July to host a major uh, donors conference in Tokyo. Uh, Pakistan, again, Japan is, is the second largest uh, aid donor after, after the US. Uh, same with Iraq. Uh, I think uh, Japan is uh, something like five billion dollars, but again, second after only the US in terms of uh, its uh, financial support for that country. Uh, in terms of other pressing issues around the globe, uh, Iran, for example, uh, Japan and the United States share the goal of uh, the abandonment of, of Iran's nuclear program, and uh, Japan has participated fully in the UN sanctions regime, as well as, uh, as implementing unilateral sanctions of its own, and this in spite of the challenges it faces at home in terms of its energy situation. Uh, regionally, DPRK, North Korea, uh, Burma, these are both countries in which Japan and the U.S. are in close, virtually daily contact uh, to address the pressing issues there, whether it's the North Korean nuclear and missile programs or in Burma, uh, the issues of, of democratization and economic liberalization. 